11 5. Alright. I'm gonna do one more time. This time, no vanish. Just to get an idea without the poison weakening effect. Also gonna make the whole process a little bit simpler. Ten four. All right. All right. A quick rundown of the build. It's a pretty straightforward hunter build. We're going for crit chance. We're going for crit damage. We're going for headshot damage. We're going for hunter damage. And when we can't get those, we're going for poison damage. Actually, poison damage is a little bit better than hunter damage, but. But other than that, it's pretty straightforward. Now, some of you might think, hey, Tetracycloid, legendary bow has more base damage. Uh, but it turns out there aren't any legendary bows with good enough legendary mods to plus the base damage increase to make up for the fact that you're essentially losing a stat in order to use the legendary bow. Um, but if I had to pick one, it would probably be the Achilles Bow, because it has crit chance on it. And Devastating Shot is a decent ability. It's not one of my favorites, um, but a lot of people really like it. So if you like it, go ahead and use this bow. Uh, it's a small damage loss to lose that 30% elemental and use this instead. Um, but it's not... So a lot of it is made up for in the base damage increase, so it ends up being very close, just not quite as strong. Fortunately, the Predator Shot Bow uh, has charging speed, which would be great if it didn't take the place of something that actually increased your damage per hit. Uh, abilities, I've got a lot of extra abilities here. Um, the core abilities, just Predator Shot, Multi Shot, Archery Master. Uh, Ghost is sort of uh, up to you, something you want to get or not. Um, I would say if you're looking to assassinate more often that you might want to and you're short on points, that's something you could probably cut and try and focus a little bit more on assassinations. Um, Six Senses Core. Arrow Master, I think is actually best at only one point. I've dropped three points in here just because having the extra arrows um, lets me test things a little bit more easily. Um, I would say the only one that you really need, and maybe even don't even really need, but like is nice to have, is the Paralyzing Arrows, which are unlocked with one of three. Um, just as an easy way to knock guys out um, if you want to be non-lethal for a second. Uh, this is required in order to deal as much damage as possible in one hit. Uh, but as far as an actual build goes, you can totally skip it. Uh, totally skip overpowered attacks as well. Uh, obviously if you want melee to be like a secondary thing that you pull out when you want to, um, you would probably want to pick up both of those abilities um, just to increase your melee effectiveness. But Definitely not necessary for a hunter focus. I would say yes, get Fury of the Bloodline, even if you're going to be super hunter focused. It's really nice having that uh, adrenaline regeneration. Um, I would skip uh, Ring of Chaos slash Wrath of Ares. Uh, I would skip Fire. It doesn't match up very well with Hunter. Uh, you can build a Fire Hunter build, and it works just fine. Um, the thing is, is the Fire would be on the head and the legs, and both of those slots are pretty crowded. Um, so you could slightly increase uh, your damage on this piece, uh, because 40% fire would be better than 20% hunter. Um, but 40% fire is worse than everything here except headshot damage, and headshot damage is a decent stat. Um, so it ends up that if you went fire, this headshot damage would turn into fire, uh, and this poison damage would turn into headshot damage. Uh, and this this poison damage would turn into basically nothing. Maybe bow charging speed, damage with bow charged shot, 10% all damage. Those would all be options. Uh, but they're all significantly weaker than 40% poison. Uh, 
so it's not quite as optimized um, because the stats that you pick up here when you replace poison damage are all smaller than 20% hunter damage. Um, but you could go fire if you wanted to. All right, back to abilities. Uh, second Wind or Ares Last Breath, definitely core. Uh, always nice to have a heal. Weapons Master is core. Uh, you want that for the crit chance. You could definitely skip charged heavy attack. You could definitely skip bull charge. Uh, definitely want to get three of three Shadow Assassin for the crit damage. Uh, you want to max Venomous Apex so it has zero cooldown. Uh, you want to use the ability instead of the engraving because by using the engraving you would lose a slot on your bow. Uh, this way you can use that slot to get a little bit more damage. Um, conversely, if you would prefer the convenience and the bar space of not having to use a skill, uh, go ahead, put one point here, uh, because you're only going to get three, three of three here uh, regardless for the extra poison damage bonus and for the extra buildup. Um, you can probably skip Hero Strike and Rush Assassinate, um, although you might want to pick those up anyway just because they're fun to use. Uh, I would get uh, Slow Time. Chronos Time Warp is better for damage min-maxing, but um, if you're trying to take out a group and regenerate Adrenaline by taking out that group, uh, which would mean taking out as many guys as possible while the Time Warp is up with headshots, um, you actually want the normal version um, because with the time warp on, uh, it wears off immediately as soon as you kill five guys with headshots. So if there's a sixth or a seventh guy that you could kill with a headshot within that 10 second window, um, this is better. But if there's not, then this is better. Um, makes your headshots hit a little harder. For absolute min-max damage, you want that headshot damage. Um, I would say that in most cases, the extra duration is better. Uh, and the fact that you don't need to hit any headshots in order for the time warp to last the full 10 seconds. Uh, Stealth Master is really nice um, because it deals more damage at night when you are out of combat, which is a nice thing to have, especially if you're still leveling up and all of your stats aren't perfect. Uh, you definitely skip Shadow of Neeks. Um, Revelation is nice. I have it 3 of 3 just for the extra range, but 1 of 3 is plenty. Uh, I would say Vanish is a really good skill to have as an assassin, or, or as a hunter. Uh, and the reason is the stun makes it really easy to just get headshots on a bunch of guys. So you stun a group, and you can just stand there and just headshot them one at a time, but while, the, uh, while they all kind of, you know, clutch their faces. Uh, in the Masteries, Hunter damage is great. Uh, crit chance is great. Crit damage is great. Headshot damage is great. Um, damage with bow charge shot, meh. But it's a nice to have if you've got the points. Uh, bow charging speed, I would say, is probably underappreciated. If you find yourself in combat, running out of time, struggling to kill people, bow charging speed can actually be surprisingly helpful in that case. Uh, it gives you just a little bit of extra um, speed with the draw uh, so that it's not, it doesn't take as long to line those shots up, which is nice. Uh, elemental buildup, I would get this to a minimum of, I want to say, 41. Uh, base is 100%, and you get 60% from 3 of 3 Poison Master. 41 will take you to 201%, and at 201%, most basic guys, actually all basic guys, will be one hit, instant intoxication. Um, everyone else that's not a mercenary or a polemark will be two hits, and mercenaries and polemarks who are not resistant to poison will be three hits. Uh, and it's nice to get that poison effect active as quickly as possible on as many enemy types as possible. Now, usually you're going to be one-shotting any high, tar uh, high health targets with a predator shot anyway, um, but it's still a nice to have, um, just in case you're you know in a knockdown dragout fight and you don't have the adrenaline to one-shot with something else. Uh, 41 is also not too many points. I think it's like 10-ish. Um, the last six points are such a tiny bonus. Um, I'm not sure the exact break point, though. In warrior damage, the only thing you really want here is armor penetration and damage dealt restored as health. Um, those are both good, nice-to-haves. And assassin, um, poison weakening effect is nice, um, but it's pretty low on the priority list. It's something you would get when you have a fair number of points. 
uh, and you want just a little bit more damage in those boss fight situations, um, because this is the only time you're really going to be in a fight long enough for the weakening effect to play a significant, uh, to be a significant factor in, you know, the combat. Uh, damage we're whenever time is slowed down is also one of those nice to have, something to dump points in way, way later. Um, the bonus is so tiny uh, that it's not going to, never going to push you over a break point really. Uh, especially once you get to the point where it's even worth, where it's even makes sense to put points here. Uh, you're already going to be dealing so much damage that that tiny little extra bonus is really only good if you're trying to get like, you know, the absolute most damage in a hit as possible. Uh, both crit chance and crit damage are good. Damage with full health is okay, although I would say it's overrated. I'm not sure exactly how it works, um, but I know it's additive with hunter damage. But uh, I also don't think it's multiplied by skill modifiers. Uh, it seems to significantly underperform the same amount of hunter damage in, for predator shots, uh, which is something that I've noticed in my testing. Uh, in fact, I've noticed that the 30% damage while full health engraving deals significantly less damage than 25% hunter damage engraving uh, on a predator headshot. Um, so my guess is that there's something going on there where the, the condi this conditional damage just isn't multiplied by this skill effect, which is really noticeable on those really big multiplier skills like predator shot where it's like 600%. Uh, poison damage is good. Um, probably your best stat, um, probably better than point for point than hunter damage. Um, but while you're leveling up, I would try and keep this hunter damage and this poison damage uh, equal. Uh, with a priority on poison damage. Well, and when I say equal, I don't mean like have the same bonus. I mean um, when you get to a point where your next point in poison damage is worth a smaller percentage than your next point in hunter damage, then switch back to hunter damage. So the pattern would be uh, one point in poison, one point in hunter, uh, five points in poison, five points in hunter, ten points in poison, ten points in hunter, fourteen points in poison, fourteen points in hunter, and then twenty twenty. Uh, health gain per adrenaline spent is also nice to have, something you'd get way later, uh, nice to have, something you get a bit way later, uh, not part of this build. Damage while attacking from behind does affect bow shots, um, it's something that's kind of nice to have. Definitely a lower priority than most of your other damage mods, but something you could pick up. Uh, cooldown duration is nice to have, not core, but you know, nice to have, and then obviously the damage with the assassinate and uh, hero strike is nice to have. And... The hunter abilities that I like, multi-shot, predator shot, uh, those are the ones I have bonuses in. Uh, I know a lot of people really like devastating shot. It is easier to use at short range, that's fair, uh, but it deals less damage. Um, so that's what I prefer. Uh, I really don't like sp spread shot or reign of destruction very much. Uh, I think they're too... It's too much effort to use them for the amount of effect that you get out of them. Uh, and Ghost Arrows is nice, I just don't have any points in the bonus because I don't really need it to do more than one shot a leader, and it already does that, so don't need to put extra points in there. Uh, and that's it. Have a good night.